All right, guys, today we're gonna have the be all end all of drywall repair. And there's so many things to think about when you're trying to fill anything from just a little nail hole to a major oops. So let's talk about the small ones first. You know, we've seen a lot of different things that we can spackle, for instance, these little holes where maybe a drywall hanger used to be. And of course, there's a lot of different things you can patch it with, but this is spackle, which typically means it's for small holes. So it's really simple. I like this stuff that's pink because I can come in here. And then the cool thing with this is once it dries, it's white, so you know when it's dry. So you can come through here, get that nice spackled out right there. Little sandpaper after it dries and it's good. Now, when you start getting into different spackles, there's a lot of different stuff on the market. And there's two new ones that have come out here recently made by 3M that are kind of interesting. I just picked these up at the hardware store today. And let me show you, this one is for small holes up to three inches, and this one does three to five inches. That's huge. So I thought, hey, let's go try, try to fix these two holes right here. Let's do it. This is a fiber reinforced. This stuff is almost like just dried toothpaste when it goes on. But this stuff here, in theory, I can go in here and go over the top of that, and that is all I would need to do. Once that dries in a few minutes, I think we can get a second shot on that. This is for smaller holes, same but different product. Let's go over here and try this. I'm gonna try to get in that pushed in there. Little sandpaper on that. Okay, I'm kind of impressed with these new putties. Now, when you're dealing with bigger holes, this is where when you kind of have those big oops, we gotta think about what to do. So like this used to be an electrical outlet. That's a little bit bigger project, but you know the most common is that doorknob. And let's take a look and see here. I'm gonna put a hole in this, then I'm gonna show you how to patch it. There we go. That's a nice little hole. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take my knife and come in here and get this cleaned up first. Cause this stuff here is just gonna get in the way. So we're gonna get that all cleaned up out of the way here. You know, that's not a big enough hole. That's not a doorknob, let's do another one here. Now we're talking. So now we've got that. Clean up the rest of the paper. Now there's two different schools of thought of how to do this. And one of them is you run down and get this patch right here. Now I kind of like this for this type of a hole right here, for instance, because what we can do is peel this back and where it, where it could get hit again, this isn't a bad spot. We can come over here like this and do that. I'll get the mud out and show you how we deal with that in a second. Now the other side over here is what I can do a California patch with. So now what I'm gonna do is this is the back of the material that we're cutting on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and break this off. And then I'm going to carefully peel this paper off of this. Try to take all the paper with. So that way I have this piece here and I'm gonna do this all the way around it. All right guys, now there's two things to think about here when you're doing this and this is kind of the major difference. This patch here, this material on the paper is much thinner than this metal in this. So it does take a little bit less mud to do this. But really this metal, if it's gonna keep getting impacted like you haven't put a doorstop down there, that might be a little bit better on spreading that load. And I'll show you how this goes here. So first one we do is get into the sheetrock mud. You can use the joint compound, the taping compound. There's a lot of different versions of it. This is kind of the topping, which makes it a little smoother. Now the secret is, is we wanna have mud under this entire bit of tape right here. So this needs to go here. And if it doesn't squeeze out out of the outside, then I didn't put enough in. The more time you take right now, the less sanding you have to do later. So this is a, a good little thing. Now this is a little bit different because you're already self-adhesive and you have the mesh. So it's gonna take a little bit more mud. So what I do is I come in like this and just plop a big old piece on there. Then I go to my next size knife right here. And so now that I've got it up here, we're gonna start to really get this up here on the wall. Really trying to not build it up too much. Because here's one tip, the more you build that up, the wider you gotta go. So you wanna keep this as thin as possible, otherwise you'll see a hump in, the, in that wall and nobody wants to see that. It'll just cause a shadow in the daylight. It's never good. So we wanna just put as much as we need to to cover it up. 
All right, guys, we're going to get a nice little pull across here to see if we can get this as smooth as possible. Do one more across the top. This might seem super daunting. And you know, there's artisans that do this for a living, but here's the thing. The more you do it, the better you get at it. This is something you can tackle. Just take the time. It's going to turn out great and you'll have a beautiful result in the end.